the question, what happens? If the target is going to be missed, will there be buybacks that will be forced? What choice will the government make to go back on no forced buybacks or miss the target? I put that to the Agriculture Minister a short time ago. If it has to get to the compulsory side of water buybacks, so be it. I, I just don't think that's going to be necessary and that's not our policy, Tom. Our policy is to support mm. water, voluntary water buybacks. Let's bring in the Deputy National Leader, Perrin Davey, for more on this. Thanks for your time. What have you made of the government today? Because they're adamant, no forced buybacks. Does that give you some assurances on this area? Because that's what you were talking about yesterday. Well, no, absolutely not. I mean, one of the things and we've heard time and time again from communities, from external reviews, from the Robbie Sefton uh, socio-economic report, from the Productivity Commission, uh, even way back when Tony Windsor was in Parliament when he did a review, buybacks hurt communities. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether they're voluntary or compulsory, you are taking water out of a market while still not addressing demand. The demand for the water is there, so what happens to those who haven't sold their water? They have to pay more to get the water delivered to them. They have to pay more for water as an input into their crops. And at the end of the day, Australians will pay more at the grocery store. Um, this is a deal that the Minister says she's struck with all states but Victoria, which, you know, how can you deliver a basin plan without a key state from the basin agreeing to be part of it? Um, and you've also got New South Wales saying they don't support buybacks. They just want the more money. So New South Wales are happy to take more money, but are still saying they don't support buybacks. Uh, no one supports buybacks. South Australia doesn't support buybacks because the South Australian minister keeps saying, buy the water from another state, leave South Australia alone. So when no state supports buybacks from their own water holders, um, to keep chasing buybacks, over and above other solutions that have come forward from communities is just uh, continuing to, you know, what, what do they say about the definition of insanity is trying to do the same thing and achieve a different outcome? Well, but isn't that why Labor's putting in more money, that under the coalition there weren't enough gains in terms of efficiency and the, the water buybacks were sort of um, essentially walked away from and it wasn't going to happen, so Labor's saying... Voluntary buybacks, more money. That, that's a different approach. They're putting more money on the uh, table, which could make a difference. There could be regional communities that go, OK, at that amount, we can figure out a way to, to keep the economy going, use different elements, whatever it might be, keep people in the area. This isn't more money for communities. This is more money for state governments and more money for the, the federal government to go down the buyback path. What has come from communities are new ideas showing that there are projects out there that can lead to incidental water savings, leaving water in the river systems, but without being tied to a licence, without stripping licences from the productive pool. So what needs that, to happen that's obviously the best result. we need a different way but of thinking what, about it. That's what Labor wants to do. The Coalition was in power for 10 years and didn't manage to get near the amount it needed through obviously going through those things. Obviously, the no, best result I, is efficiency I, I and so on. I beg to differ. We got 98% of the way towards delivering the key part of the basin plan, which is the sustainable diversion limits. The Minister, Tanya Plibersek, has made it all about 450, which is an over and above. It was never part of the fundamental basis of the basin plan. The basin plan should be about sustainable diversion limits, making sure we're not taking you, too much okay, water hang on. out of the basin. And we got the, there. The 450 was part of the plan. The coalition said it would deliver. The you 450 say, is oh, part of a of seesaw. Peripheral. The 450 is part of a seesaw component of the basin plan, an up and down mechanism. Hmm. 605 down, 450 up. The key of that part of that chapter of the basin plan is there is a limit to which way it can swing to make sure it doesn't swing too far one way or the other. The 450 was never. Well, uh, a set in stone. It was always based on voluntary participation and it was always based on neutral and positive socioeconomic outcomes, the way Tony Burke wrote it at the time. But we've got, that's what Labor's saying, voluntary contributions. You, you alluded to as well. And, but she's also saying she said, needs the whole amount. 
So you can't have you, you, you said you don't have enough people volunteering. You, you said before you might not get the that it's not more money for communities, but you said it's more money for governments to give through buybacks. Buybacks go to communities. That that is more money to communities. Buybacks go to an individual. They want to take up buybacks. So as an individual farmer, you can sell your water. You can sell your water now. You can sell it on the open market, and it stays in the consumptive pool. But, but that individual farmer gets a payment from the Commonwealth and then they can retire, they can move to the Gold Coast, they can convert their, their irrigation farm to a dry land farm and, and you know, um, sack five of their farm. Keep the money in the community that way. no longer so intensive. They don't help the community at mm. all. So at all, it, not a single dollar goes... Buybacks are into... for an individual, sorry, whereas... Sorry, not, not a single costs... dollar from buybacks goes into communities is what you're saying. Well, it goes into the individual's pockets and how the, that individual then spends the money to adjust their farming practices or to adjust their lifestyle is entirely up to the individual. Whereas when you are talking about infrastructure projects, you have people employed for the construction of the infrastructure. You've got infrastructure underpinning further uh, industry productivity and development and extra jobs created. Wouldn't it be then best, rather than just talking about what money's going into it, tying things to buyback money, and that does go into the communities? Uh, uh, that's how the Basin Plan was written, and that is exactly what the Minister is trying to change. At the moment, for the 450, you have to have it tied to an infrastructure project, and the Minister wants to remove that requirement so she can go straight down the path of buybacks, which is the laziest form of water recovery. Mm. We're in a situation where we're going to experience some pretty dry years. Aren't you worried about the system's health? I know you're worried about the community. That's fair enough. There's, there's people who, who earn their living from this water. But what about the river system as well? Well, let's look at what has been achieved in the more than 12 years since the Basin Plan first passed through Parliament. Prior to that, we had the Millennium Drought and everyone was on their knees. And South Australia couldn't get enough water over the border to meet their uh, needs for towns and industry. Since then, we have had another devastating drought that uh, just finished um, in 2018, 19, 2020. It was a devastating drought. Some would say worse than the millennium drought in certain areas of the basin. And yet, despite South Australia's baseline requirements going down in line with the formulas that are associated with their water sharing agreements, 2,000 gigalitres extra water still went across the border to South Australia year on year because we have the basin plan in place. To me, that is a success. So why is everyone focusing on what hasn't been achieved by the basin plan? We should be looking at what has been achieved and saying we have enough water to actually get us through the next drought as was envisaged by the original basin plan. So maybe we need to think about and hit the reset button for the final 2% that we haven't yet got to. Got to leave it there, Perrin Davey. Talk again soon. Thank you. Thank you.